If you make videos on a regular basis, you're probably often wondering how you can make your workflow easier. But not only that, you probably want to increase the production value of your stuff as well. You can try to do it all yourself, or maybe you can just check out some plugins. Motion VFX have been making plugins for Final Cut Pro for a while now, and they have literally hundreds of products for that NLE. More recently, they've been porting some over to DaVinci Resolve. In this video, we're going to check out two that are aimed at YouTubers and other online creators, MTuber2 and Mintro. As I said at the top, we're going to be checking out MTuber2 and Mintro. This video is not sponsored by Motion VFX. They don't know I'm making it. If they see it, it'll be after it's published. I bought MTuber2 many months ago and have been using it in my videos ever since, but I am an affiliate with them and I asked them if they would give me or let me borrow one or two of the other plugins. And they did give me the M intro that we're gonna be taking a look at in this video as well. Any motion graphics or titles or any effects that you see throughout this video are generated with MTuber2 and or M intro, and sometimes in combination with some other assets that I might throw in there just to make it unique. In order to use the plugins, you actually do have to install an installer called M Installer, which maybe rubs some people the wrong way, but on the plus side, it makes actually installing and managing all the plugins that you own really easy. And then here you can, you know, repair if something goes wrong, or if you don't want to use them anymore, you can uninstall them. This installer doesn't have to be running. Uh, once you have everything installed and ready to go, you can close it down. It doesn't run in the background or anything. Once you have everything installed utilizing the M installer, to find your effects within DaVinci Resolve, come up to the effects panel. And what I'd recommend doing, at least at the beginning, is make sure you're highlighted on Toolbox. So that will ensure that you're not drilled down into any one particular category. And the reason for that is, uh, as we scroll down, we'll find the M intro, M intro 2. So here are all the effects that come with that plugin. There's more than 55, I believe it is. And then coming down again, we'll see M tuber 2, all of those options. But if I actually skipped one, Right here, okay, MTuber2 magnifying glass. So why is this separate from all the other MTuber2s down here? That's because the magnifying glass is actually in effect, whereas the rest of the MTuber2 and all of the M intros work as titles. So I just wanted you to be aware of that, so, so you know that you're actually finding everything that you paid for. So once you know that, you know, you can drill down from titles and just click this drop down. you'll see motion VFX there. And then you have all of the plugins that work as titles. So you've got M Intro 2, and you've got M Tuber 2. And if you come down to Effects, Motion VFX, you can see that some of the plugins, they work more based on effects as opposed to titles. But you'll find here that M Tuber 2 does in fact have one that works as an effect. You can also favorite these just by clicking that little star and those will appear right here in your favorites bar. So you don't have to go through the whole process of just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and finding them. Another thing you can of course do is uh, just search. So just click on that search bar and then MTuber and that'll pull up just those. So you're only seeing MTuber and nothing else. As long as you're highlighted on toolbox, it pulls up both the magnifying glass, which is an effect, and then all of the ones which work as titles. I'm just gonna pick a couple and we can go through and just see how they work. One I see people use a lot is this MTuber subscribe player. If you hover and drag your mouse, you can see that it gives you a preview. This one is like a faux YouTube page and I have it dragged over a clip here in my timeline. And actually I'm gonna duplicate this real quick. Hold on a second. You can see one of the issues with this one, because it works as a title and not an effect, it just sits over the top of a video track and it doesn't affect that video track at all. So as this thing animates in, the video track below it remains static. What I did in this one here is keyframe the video track underneath so that it would track along with the animation of the MTuber effect. So that's something you can do. I mean, that took just a little bit of extra work and it's not perfect because I think the keyframes for the MTuber effect 
have some easing or some beziers in them that I wasn't, I didn't quite know exactly what they were doing. So my video doesn't quite track along perfectly, but I think it's good enough. Click on the effect or the title. So we're highlighted on that. And then you come up to your inspector. You can see we're in the video tab and title, and it shows here MTuber subscribe player. And here are all the controls. You've got content controls. So you can adjust the position and the X and Y axis, just like anything else. You can scale this up or rotate it. Um, I wouldn't want to do any of that stuff with this because it just basically fits the screen. Text controls, that's going to affect this subscribe button. It changes actually, it goes subscribe and then text control 2 is subscribed in the past tense and that changes there when they click on it. So you can make these anything that you want. Just like any other text effect, you can change it to whatever font, you can change its color, change the font size and the spacing for both text one and two. For shapes control, that is gonna be, it clicks on the thumbs up, those little, that little particle thing that pops out of there. Those are the controls for that particle. So you've got the different colors and for the background, the color here, you just click on that. It'll open up the dialog box for changing the color. And it's basically just kind of this gray here, so that's why it's so muted. But if you wanted to change it to a bright, vibrant color, you could slide that over and then select whatever color you wanted to change this to. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at one more. Close down the inspector. And let's choose like a social media call out. So let's try this one here. You can set the duration of these. If you hit Command or Control D, the duration dialog box pops up. Most of these, if not all, will default to five seconds. So you could change that to whatever you want to. And you can also change the duration by just dragging them out like any other video track on your timeline. And the great thing about it is that the animations will automatically adjust to the new timing. So you don't really have to do anything. You're not gonna lose anything on the, on the front or the back end if you change the duration. So click on it again in the inspector you'll see that it's MTuber social media lower third. A lot of them will have an in and out animation that are by default toggled on. So that just shows the in is just that growing out of nothing and the out is it shrinking back into nothing. So if you wanted it to just appear on screen without doing that, then you could toggle that. It'll just pop on. For content controls, position X and Y. So let's drag this down to Maybe the bottom left corner more. And then you can make this giant or tiny. For logo controls, you have all these options for different social media platforms. I don't have a TikTok, but anyway. There are keyframes next to just about every parameter. So you can animate all of these as well if you would like to. So under text controls, let's scroll this over. So we'll change this. I don't have a TikTok, but if I did, maybe it would be that. We'll change this to something, I don't know, and change the color. Matches that, I guess. Close that down for text to. And choose that red there. I can't believe how close I got to that blue, just by random chance. Let's check out an intro. Pull this logo over and just drop it down. Let's see what it does there. I'm gonna shorten it. I'm just gonna grab it at the end and just trim it to something like that. And now I'm gonna click on it and come up to the inspector and we can see what parameters we have to adjust. Again, you have the in and out points that you can toggle on or off. And that basically just looks kind of like a crash report. So there's the background that has those little plus signs on there that fades on and then it wipes over and then some stuff happens. So the first thing, let's go ahead and click on logo controls, browse, and I'll pick that there. So that adds that in there pretty easy. And I think the position and the scale of that look fine. 
I'm going to scroll over here and see. I'm going to brighten this up some at least. I wonder if this is transparent. So let's try something real quick. I'm going to just I'm gonna pull that up on an, another track and come to generators and pull a solid and put that underneath. And now let's change this color and see if this does anything. Okay, so yeah, this is just a transparent. So if you wanted to change that background, you would have to add a solid to that. Maybe something like that would be kind of cool. Now I come back to the effect itself. Still maybe make this a bit darker. Something like that. Let me shrink this too. Now for the elements colors. So that's pretty cool. I mean, just a couple different uh, parameters to adjust and you can sort of tailor it to your own vibe. Let's talk about pros. Style and aesthetics is subjective and how you think these plugins look is going to be up to you. For the most part, I think that a lot of these effects and a lot of these plugins all look pretty cool. There are some times where I feel like maybe they're a little bit generic or maybe a little sterile. But there are so many ways that you can customize them. And what I like to do is just combine them with other assets and other plugins that I use to kind of dirty them up and maybe give them a feel that's a little bit more conducive to my style, such as it is. I know that's not a pro, but it kind of leads me into the pro in that they're so easy to use and they're so easy to customize. I know cost is relative, but I would say for the price of each plugin, you do get quite a lot with them. There's usually at least 50 separate items, if not more for each plugin that you buy. I know the installer might be controversial for some people, but it does make owning and installing, updating and uninstalling all the plugins super easy. As for the cons, as I said before, price is relative, but I know for a lot of people, $100 for a plugin might be, might seem like a lot, but if you do plan to use them, and if you consider over the course of years and over the course of hundreds, if not thousands of videos, $100 is kind of a drop in the bucket. The biggest con for me is that these are very resource intensive plugins and they will increase the amount of time that it takes to render your videos. Not only that, it just actually working with the plugins can take a little bit of time. So they're very easy to modify and make changes to, but when you wanna see those changes in action, it will take a while to render. And when I say a while, it really depends on the complexity of the effect that you're using. So a lot of those like call outs and like YouTube subscribe buttons and stuff, those are pretty simple. They'll render in a few seconds, but some of the more detailed and extensive like intros and things like that with a lot of particle effects could take up to a minute or more depending on the power of your computer to render. In conclusion, I think that these kinds of plugins, motion graphics in particular, are worth it for a lot of creators because it's just another skill set that takes a lot of time to learn, let alone master. And I know that I will never put that time in order to get good at it or even like slightly proficient at it. So it's completely worth it to spend some money on the front end and get like a pack of plugins that I know that I'll be able to use for years to come. So if you are that kind of creator and you can see yourself using these again and again and again, then I do think that they're a worthwhile investment. If you wanna see more videos about post-production, editing, color grading, maybe check out this playlist. And while you're clicking around on the screen, maybe hit that subscribe button.